Thanks for staying with us. Now, um, today is Culinarians Day, and culinarians are experts in the art and science of cooking and serving food. They can be chefs, cooks, home cooks, bakers, and anyone else who is involved in the process of preparing and serving meals. Professional culinarians tend to work in restaurants and commercial kitchens. Now, while the origin of Culinarian Day are unknown, we can all safely assume that the holiday was invented as a way to thank all culinarians who make our experience of eating out fun and special. Hey. Mm. <laughs> now, th this Do you love to eat out, first of all? I love to eat out. It, what actually comes to mind when I think about culinary is men, because men make better chefs than women. Well, Do you agree with that? Some will argue. Some will argue with you. I well, know. Uh, men well, make better they say chefs so. than women. You they know? say so, yeah. Yes, absolutely. Like the Bobby Flays, the Chef Ramsay. I'm a fan of Chef, Chef Ramsay because Hell's Kitchen, you've watched the mm -hmm. program. So I think men make better chefs than women. I am all for food. Food uh, is you, good. You love, do you, so you love to dine out? <laughs> oh, totally. Ah, totally. Okay. I remember my first experience in a good posh restaurant. Um, in Lagos here. It was a Chinese restaurant. And when I got there, they actually brought um, the, what's it called? The white napkin for mm, me. The hot towel. Yes, the hot towel. And I had it and I asked, okay, what, what, do, you to to what, what do you want me to do with it? Hey, was an I'm telling you, I showed myself. So I think um, everybody should dine out every now and Absolutely. then. Absolutely. Uti, are you a fan experience. of dining out? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know me, Uwa. You know that mm -hmm. I'm a foodie. Um, mm -hmm. Funny enough, I actually toyed with the idea of going to culinary school. Um, uh, so, in fact, it's still a it's still a, a thing, you know, on your bucket list. Yeah, I think exactly. I'm still going to go to culinary school at some point. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a total foodie. I love to eat out. I love to cook. Everything food. Literally, I tell people you you haven't enjoyed a meal until you sat down and eating with me like when you hear me talk about food i can make you hungry ah. you need to you need to invite us over for a meal then yes yeah, so after covid i'm not a foodie once, i can once, do without once corona allows us yes yeah, so once covid is over we'll come for a proper absolutely, meal all right absolutely. so Isi, what did you find for us in the news today okay in the news today what i discovered the key thing here is let's call this let's understand this the southern killings in nigeria currently in um, kaduna is no news to anybody. It has been happening not since 2015. Erofi, or Governor Erofi is yet to do something about it. And this has led the women to protest and you know, expose the, the nakedness breast, yeah. yes, in, uh, in the streets of um, Kaduna, in a place called Zango Katap. They walked around, some of them wearing black, some of them you know, belly exposed, and they expressed their grief and concern that people are still being killed in southern um so you Kaduna. know what? this is actually close to home for me because you know mm. everybody that knows knows that i was born and bred in Kaduna. my parents still live in Kaduna state i have experienced mm. how you know religious wars and all of that you know you just see literally see someone yes like a burnt goat on the floor but he's a human being so mm. this killings is not new even it did not start with um the governor um Erufai, but how they are, they've not been able to curb it curb instead it. It has left, because then when I was growing up, it was the main city mm -hmm. of Kaduna State. So now it has left the city and is now going into all the... The uh, outskirts. The outskirts, the, 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 local, the um, um, villages and all of that. Yes. So, I mean, I don't know what can be done, but mm -hmm. I believe that we, we, with willpower, you know, our government can actually curb it. It's possible. I think, I think we should hold the governor accountable because yeah. he also said that, uh, let me state something that somebody said in Twitter. He said that in 2015, Nigerians voted for a change. Now, instead of housing schemes or accommodation schemes to house the living, we are now clearing more spaces on for our burial. lands to, bu to build vaults for the mm, dead. Mm. I think it is totally not fair on those that have passed on. It's a thing of why would we be killing people when we should be having people who are alive, who are living, who are <laughs> being cared for, and That's they feel true. that the government is standing by them, mm. you know? Well, so we'll, we'll, we'll keep um, following up on that story, but mm. we need to move on. Okay. Uti, what did you find for us in the news today? Okay, so my headline says, um, Pantami orders Naipos to suspend new tariff for courier services. 
So the Minister of Communications and Digital Economy, uh, Dr. Issa Pantami, has ordered NIPOS to suspend the new tariff on registration of courier services. Now, when I woke up this morning, mm. um, I tend to scan Twitter when I wake up first thing in the morning, and I saw this tweet from Dr. Issa, um, and it was a declaration that says, NIPOS, I've seen you doing this, um, and you need to, to suspend it until, um, and get in touch with us until you, or, you know, suspend it until you hear from us, get in touch with us. Mm. And I thought, why is he putting out a tweet, you know, for something that obviously is internal? Um, and then I, later in the day, I got a petition that said to sign the petition. And that's when I actually saw what they were proposing, mm -hmm. which was essentially uh, an operations fee mm -hmm. for logistic companies, companies ranging yeah. from 250,000 to 20 million naira. Now, I think this is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, over the course of this week, we have seen so many different, yes. um, I don't know if you ladies have seen the stamp duty for tenants. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, all sorts of different taxes and charges that the government is constantly taxing us Nigerians with. Our income hasn't gone up. Inflation is going up. And the government is squeezing us even further. Let me not even bring into this time or this conversation the effects of corruption. Now, most Nigerians, I'm sure, wouldn't have a problem paying taxes if the money was actually used the way it was meant to be used. Absolutely. So the fact is you keep squeezing me and squeezing me, and this money we all know is going to line the pockets of a few. The, the question so I'm glad to see yeah, go ahead. that it's now been suspended. So we will um, we'll keep on top of this story and see what eventually happens. Mm -hmm. The government, for me, this is the government speaking out of two sides of their mouth because the exactly. vice president is there on the Pebec Council, and we've talked so much about supporting mm -hmm. SMEs on this show. You know, logistics right now is critical to the survival of so many SMEs, Small given businesses. the COVID-19 yes. pandemic. Mm -hmm. To bring this in is literally trying to kill businesses. We've joked on this show before how living in Nigeria is an extreme sport. Yeah. Living, it, doing business in Nigeria is almost suicide. Like, you literally <laughs> have to have, this is not even a thick skin. You need to have marble skin to be able to do this. Because our government consistently comes up with things that can turn, you know, can put you out of business tomorrow. So I'm, I'm really happy to see this. Yes. And I hope that it is scrapped completely. Yeah, and it you know, has to be scrapped. We've also talked about policies, the policies the government makes, mm. which actually, you know, strangulates the no, Well, everything. The I, keep, I keep saying that, you see, mm. they keep, you know, when, when, it, when it's going to affect the citizens, they are quick. To, to bring up so many laws. So fast. now you didn't even you forgot to add the 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 power um, uh, tariffs that have gone up as well. Mm -hmm. Everything is going up. VAT exactly. is going up. Mm -hmm. So where do you expect the citizens to get this money from? It's not like our income has uh, uh, has increased. There is you know? no Instead, way. Instead, we are not even making money. There is no way. Inflation is be. going up, so you're actually getting poorer, but your bills are getting higher. A higher. Exactly. How does that even make sense? So, so there is no way there won't be um um what's it called corruption or in um uh, what's it called um um. um Sorry, I've lost my thoughts. Sorry, no, no, <laughs> Let me take my story. So, um, resident doctors, you know, because we've been following on resident mm. doctors and all their allegations. I mean, sorry, their claims and. Um, mm. I'm, I'm striking today, I'm not striking tomorrow. Resident mm -hmm. doctors threatening fresh strike um, to, um, tomorrow. They are, they are threatening to, to do another fresh strike again. And they're saying um, um, the National Association of Resident Doctors have given the federal government three weeks to address its demand or its members will resume their suspended strike on Monday, um, sorry, August um, 17th. That's when they plan to, to, to carry out that strike. Okay. Part of what their demands are COVID-19 hazard allowance to their members, and mm -hmm. which is long overdue. And they are also saying that um, healthcare workers' um, death in service benefits mm -hmm. to their next of kin for all their fallen heroes. And... Um, I think that's part of I why they, said they were planning to do. No, so that's about part it. of why they are they are go, they are reopening this. Um, what's it called? The the the, the plans for them to the plans to strike. strike again. If the government does not put all of these things into consideration, mm. they will go back and, and strike. We can't lose more doctors. We are hearing about doctors escaping Nigeria. Mm. So please, I mean, if for anything, if you truly love this country. Put priority on our healthcare workers. They are the frontline um, fighters for this war. And if you if you show us that you love us as your citizens, mm -hmm. you will take them seriously and you put the premium on their health and their well-being. I think we can leave it there. All take right, so me. we'll take a short break and we'll discuss nutrition and our health. Please stay with us. We'll be right back.